Welcome to the show, Find Your Planet. The best place to social distance is outer space. So if you go, stay tuned so you can choose the right place. All right, kids, welcome back. Abington Junior High School. We are bringing you another episode featuring the planets as we wind down the year. Uh, one of our previous topics was estuaries that you guys loved, and there was a video on estuaries with a voice that nicknamed all the estuaries, and one of them was Bahia Sound, Billy Bong, and we bring you today Mercury, who played that voice in the estuary video. So, Mr. Mercury is here today. He is going to tell you about himself and his friends. Yo, my name is Mercury. I'm the smallest planet in the solar system, but don't be hating. I'm closer to the sun than any other planet, so El Sol always has my back, or front, or, but yeah, uh, yeah. Well, anyway. Yeah, I'm about the size of your moon, but I don't need a moon. I'm independent, and I like to live alone. No need for someone looking over my shoulder all the time. The sun looks much bigger from my perspective since I'm much closer. It's also much brighter from where I hang out. I'm the hottest planet in our solar system, and that title belongs to nearby Venus. Oh, I'm not the hottest planet. Venus is, thanks to its dense atmosphere. Unlike Venus, I don't have enough gravity to hold a dense atmosphere. That's why I'm like a Katy Perry song. I'm hot and then I'm cold. I'm hot. Uh, that was before you were born. I will stick around. I'd like to tell you about some of my good friends. Here we go. Next, my bay, B-A-E, Venus, is the second planet from the sun. She doesn't like being compared to Earth just because of the similar size. Venus is a very different world. Venus spins slowly in the opposite direction relative to the other planets. It's retrograde, and like me, has no moon. She likes to do her own thing. Her thick atmosphere traps heat in a runaway greenhouse effect, making her the hottest planet in the solar system with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead. Glimpses below the clouds reveal volcanoes and deformed mountains. Winds on Venus can exceed 450 miles per hour with sulfuric acid rain and purple lightning. Purple lightning. Uh, she's always in a bad mood, but when you get to know her, she's really nice. And let's keep moving out. Uh, oh, look at this. Earth. You know Earth, it's pretty awesome. Confident, sensitive, Earth is friendly and will always help out someone in need. Earth is by far the most generous and giving of planets. Although it's the only planet with life-sustaining water for diverse life, Earth doesn't brag about it. Earth has true grit. <clears throat> it can take a beating like we're giving it now, but it always rises to the occasion. There have been five mass extinction events, but Earth has overcome them all. The name Earth is at least 1,000 years old. All of the planets, except for Earth, are named after Greek and Roman gods or goddesses. However, the name Earth is a Germanic word, erd, which simply means the ground. Strange, because most of our ground is covered by water and, and ice. And from space, Carl Sagan said it best. Earth is a pale blue dot. Pale blue dot. I think one of the astronauts called it a big blue marble. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, now if you go a little bit further, my main man, Mars, it's my bestie. Mars doesn't love the limelight anymore, but Mars used to be the earth of the solar system, but it was hard work and he's enjoying retirement now. Currently, Mars is a dusty, cold desert world with a very thin atmosphere. It's red because it's literally rusting. This dynamic planet has seasons, polar ice caps, weather, canyons, and extinct volcanoes. These features are evidence of an even more active past. And yes, Mars had running water. Mars is one of the most explored bodies in our solar system. And it's the only planet where we've sent rovers to roam the alien landscape. These robotic explorers have found lots of evidence that Mars was much wetter and warmer with a thicker atmosphere billions of years ago. Astronauts likely will set foot on the surface of Mars 
in the next 25, touch wood, or 50 years. Fingers are crossed. Oh, that would be great, don't you think? Well, we're gonna move a little further. Okay. My belt is a little tight here, but we'll get past that. And Oh, the goat, as in greatest of all time. Jupiter, the largest and strongest, but a big teddy bear rather than a grizzly. Jupiter, along with all the planets after this, is a Jovian planet, also known as gas giant. What we call him, Jupe. Jupe is so important, he has four bodyguards. The Galilean moons of Ganymede, Io, Europa, and Callisto. We owe our existence to Jupiter. Its gravity protects us from colliding asteroids and comets. Jupiter's familiar stripes and swirls are actually cold, windy clouds of ammonia and water floating in an atmosphere of hydrogen and helium. Jupiter's iconic great red spot is a giant storm, many times bigger than Earth, and has raged for hundreds of years. Lightning storms on Jupiter burn methane gas into graphite soot, which cools into diamonds as it falls. Oh, I'd run around, not with an umbrella, but with my pockets wide open. She shines bright like a diamond. So shine on, Jupiter. Shine bright, my friend. Oh, look at that spot, huh? Ooh. Look at this one. Saturn is Jupiter's little sister. Composed of the same two gases, hydrogen and helium, they are actually fraternal twins, which means they're not identical. Sadie, as Jupe calls her, loves music. In fact, her favorite jam is Single Ladies by Beyonce. You mean like, you put a ring on it? Get it, a ring? No, no. The, adorned with thousands of beautiful ringlets, Saturn is unique among the planets. The rings that orbit Saturn are small pieces of ice and dust. It's not the only planet to have rings, but nothing compares to Saturn. Sadie rains diamonds too. It's raining diamonds. Hallelujah, it's raining diamonds. Ooh, put, put a ring on it. Uranus is uh, quite eccentric. Like the other Jovian planets, it's huge and gassy, much like myself. Uranus rolls on its side as it orbits the sun. Uranus may have collided with an Earth-sized object long ago, tilting it. Uranus is so large, you can see it with a telescope, despite it being almost 2 billion miles away. Now, if Earth was the size of a nickel, Uranus would be about the, as big as a softball. 63 Earths could fit inside Uranus. Uranus is very cold and windy. It's surrounded by 13 faint rings and has, listen to this, 27 small moons. There's even a possibility of finding diamonds in the core of Uranus. Ur Uranus is often the butt of many jokes, meaning he gets teased a lot. But Jupe steps right in because nobody messes with Jupiter. Oh, oh look at that. Neptune loves to sit back and planet watch. Oh, it's a perfect spot for it. Now that Pluto has moved on, Neptune can see everyone in front of him. Tunes can look directly at the sun because the sun just looks like a distant star, looks to him. Dark, cold, and whipped by supersonic winds, ice giant Neptune is the eighth and most distant planet in our solar system. Neptune is the only planet in our solar system not visible to the naked eye. Uranus is barely visible to the naked eye if conditions are perfect. It takes 165 years for Neptune to orbit the sun. NASA's Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to have visited Neptune up close. It flew past in 1989 on its way out of the solar system. Meep, meep. Hello, Neptune. I'm Voyager 2. <laughs> now, pity the Pluto, but somebody has to be the smallest. Can I stay? No. It's not my fault I'm dense and rocky, but far away. It doesn't matter. My orbit is a little out of control. That's true. Yeah, my moon is pretty big compared to me. Okay, I'd rather be alone out here anyway. You see, Pluto wanted to move on, but we didn't kick him out. Everyone is still friends with Pluto. Earth likes to storytell sometimes that we decided to no longer include him. 
Pluto is still part of the sun's orbit, but does his own thing. He's not alone. Most don't know, but Pluto is happily married to Charon, his moon. And they have relatives that live close by called dwarf planets. Happy, dopey, sneezy. No, I'm only kidding. That's a joke. Speaking of dwarf planets, dwarf planets are the worlds that are too small to be considered full-fledged planets, but too large to fall into smaller categories. Look at the little chart here. We've got the Earth's moon over there on the left-hand side for size comparison. And here are some of the other dwarf planets that we've found. Eris and then Pluto, Haumea in the Kuiper Belt, Makibaki, or some people say Mikmik, and then Ceres, which is in the asteroid belt. And way out there, I think they found me, Planet X. They call me Planet Nine. I'm just hypothetical. I, I really haven't been discovered yet. Mathematicians think they're so smart, sometimes they can't even tell a moon and a planet apart. But I, I'm a pretty big deal out here. I'm more massive than Earth, and my orbit is wide. Apogee, perigee, golly gee, one day they will come after me, but I will never lose my pride. If you want to be the one to visit, it's quite a long ride, so pack some sandwiches. I'll see you on the edge of tomorrow. Lots of reverb there, fellas. <laughs> Am I supposed to pop in here now? Billabong, what? <laughs> There you go. That is the face of uh, Mercury. Mr. <laughs> Leary, thank you. Oh, my, my, my pleasure. Thank, thank the uh, students who have had to sit through the, that slideshow for so many years. I, it's, uh, it's fun and it's beautifully done. And as, as long as they walk away from it knowing that estuaries are the givers of life, that's for sure. So uh, we're going to send out that estuary link to them. Um, so that, there's a child at the beginning of that video. Uh, before yes. you jump in to narrate, yes, you, you said that is that is my uh, my baby boy who is uh, six foot uh, I think five or six foot six and two hundred and fifty pounds, uh, currently enrolled at Rush Medical College in Chicago, uh, studying to be a, a doctor. So uh, it's amazing how time marches on. It's kind of like the universe; it just keeps changing and moving and just going on. I, I don't know. Do you want to just tell the uh the junior high school students a little bit about like what you do, your career, and also they're probably really curious to know how your job and your life has changed because of the uh, stay at home orders. Sure, okay. Uh, I guess uh, these are junior high students? Yeah, seventh grade earth and space science. Oh, superb. I had uh, exact, I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I was in junior high. Absolutely not. Don't, don't let anybody tell you that. And if you guys don't know what you want to do when you get a little older, don't worry, because you're going to be exposed to things in high school and afterwards. And you're going to light upon something that, that tickles your fancy. Um, so the, the, the decision I made was I wanted to be a teacher uh, because I thought that was the, the greatest job you could possibly do. And you look at these four guys here, and they're in the trenches uh, every day doing that. And that's, that's a hard job. Uh, I, when I graduated from university, I was given a provisional certificate, which meant that I had five years to complete my master's, uh, which was uh, a kind of a catch-22. How could you afford graduate school if nobody was hiring? Because at that time, the 70s, nobody was, one ad in the New York Times would get 3,000 applications, uh, PhDs for eighth grade English teacher in Shoreham, Wading River. Um, so I, I, try, I tried substituting, I tried, uh, I was two-fifths of an English teacher and had to do the hockey team and the student newspaper and the drama club and hall duty. Uh, I, it got to the point where my, my provisional certificate uh, was going to expire. So I said to the one superintendent that I had made inter, in, inroads with, I'm gonna take a year off and uh, uh, complete my master's and I'll come back. He said, no problem, kid, the job will be waiting for you. So. I did that, and while I was working on my master's, I was moonlighting in a recording studio. Uh, and it wasn't a, a music studio, it was a production studio that had sound effects and voices and original music for jingles and things like that. And I thought, wow, what a job. Uh, this is uh, something I think I could do. That's, that's, that's how it started. And 
it is the type of business, uh, and this is good advice, I guess, for whatever you guys want to do. Just show up on time, be polite, uh, take direction, uh, and you'll be referred to other jobs. Uh, one thing led to another, a MasterCard commercial led to uh, action figure, led to a video game, led to movie. And I, I showed up one time for a, a voiceover audition and the guy said to me, do you look like that all the time? I said, that's a weird thing to ask a voice guy. And he said, uh, you know what this is for? Make a long story short, all of a sudden I got a job on camera and my wife said, Let's, uh, let's market this adorable face of yours. And uh, that led to Boardwalk Empire and uh, goodness gracious, 30 Rock and FBI on Channel 2 and uh, working with Spike Lee and a couple of other nice uh, directors. So I've been blessed in that regard. Um, uh, and I never looked back. So I guess what I'm trying to say to all the kids in the class, I guess we could go around the room and say, uh, oh, what do what do you like, uh, Billy? And he might say photography. What about what do you like, Tilly? I like to sing, and and we go around. Everybody has a, a certain passion, a certain interest, certain hobby. Uh, maybe if you're lucky, you can turn that into an occupation, uh, because there's a number of applications. You don't have to go into show business. You can go into advertising. You can go into marketing. You can go into teaching. These guys are on every day. The the, the stage manager goes, Mr. Herb. Uh, English class, it's, that's three o'clock, right? you know, and he's just got to go. I mean, he's on. He doesn't even have to go into makeup. He's, uh, <laughs> he's that good looking. But uh, just enjoy what, what you're doing and, uh, and be polite. The, the only thing you have to do is just be courteous uh, to somebody else. That's it. Yeah, that's a great that? message. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Lear, what, what's something that, that you've done that the kids will be familiar with? the kids of this age so uh, oh boy uh if they play video games uh, uh silent hill it's a horror game uh i know it's not i was also uh involved with uh what was voted by a uh, gamer magazine as the worst game ever made I, I won't even give you that title uh they said that the voice acting was good they just thought the script and the and the, the i watched it and i it was horrible uh was, the different com uh if they listen to commercials down in in that area uh, of course, PC Richard, I'm the voice of PC Richard. Also, when I was working for that company, I wrote the jingle, the, <laughs> the whistle for PC Richard. Uh, in that area also is uh, Einstein Healthcare Network, more than medicine. Um, I've done some stuff for the, the pesky flyers and promotion because my, my strong suit is uh, this, this over the top tractor pull voice, like today for four days only. And that led to best week ever on VH1, the Sizzler, the best week ever. So here's some, you guys your age go, oh my God, you have to, call, oh my goodness, you have to call my, uh, my voice message and leave, leave something on there. So, and a lot of action figures. My wife is usually the dispatcher. She'll say, uh, calling all cars, calling all cars. And I'll go, unit 10, we're rolling. There were a lot of police vehicles and fire vehicles and things like that. Uh, so think of, think of all the toys, everything's got to have sound. And when you call a, a place and they say, thanks for calling. If your call was important, we would have answered it. Instead, we're putting you on hold. Bye. Uh, those types of machines. And also there's a lot of web-based training, even before the pandemic. Uh, a lot of companies, instead of handing out manuals and how to and set up things, you would, you, you would go, they would tell you to go on this website and we'll show you how to hook up your copier, your uh, your blender, uh, all of these things have to be, be done. So I'm basically, my mother wanted me to be an interpreter. She thought it would be great if I could speak to uh, Mr. Traver and he would say something to me in his language and then I would turn to Mr. Fogel and, and tell him what he said. Uh, that would be the greatest job. So that she was looking at. So in a way I became an interpreter, except I don't have to even know a foreign language. I just have to know a radio speak, which is sometimes very funny, like today for four days only. You can't do that if you have today for four days over. Or <laughs> the cheese with the paper between the slices. No, the cheese between, with the paper between the slice. The minute, minute you put the, cheese, the paper between the slice, it becomes slices. So, anyway, anyway. crazy. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if they, some of the kids would uh, just, just want, keep their ears out if they hear a sound coming out of a, a box or a toy or something like that. It might be me. So, 
if, or if they get... see a movie and they, they tend not to blink because I'm usually on the screen for about three milliseconds to see, see the thing. So. I, th I think that's good. Lear, um, thank you for your time. I'm going to. Oh. I'm going to stop recording and then we'll continue to chat a little bit. Okay. So thank you guys, thanks for all you uh, all you guys do. Uh, these these four scallywags right here on the on the screen. Uh, you kids are, are are very lucky to have uh, dedicated professionals like this, and uh, hopefully someday you'll grow up to to have the same passion for something, and uh, you'll change the world too. Thank you so much, Blair. Thank you Bye so kid. much. All right.